Good morning. I'm Pastor Gene from Maranatha Baptist Church. Coming to you from my home this morning as we're sequestered, but we're on lesson nine, I believe it is, of the continued series in the Life Stage class called Freedom from Addiction. And I'd like to talk to you about freedom from addiction. Those problems maybe that have cropped up, especially since you've been sequestered, have more time than you plan to spend by yourself and your home. And sometimes we turn or we reach to those habits that are not good habits. The habits that Bible, the Bible calls sin, the sins that so easily beset us. And when we do that, uh, I'll just give you an example. Right now, you're joining me in my home and I'm having a cup of coffee. I didn't always like coffee. When I first tasted coffee, I thought it was bitter, hot. How could anyone like the caustic substance? But eventually I adapted it. I put in sweetener or creamer or things that made it taste better, things that were more palatable. And then it became a habit and then an addiction or an obsession. So if things like that affect you, that's the purpose of this lesson today. You're going into a series where we'll talk about when we succumb to our habit, we yield to temptation. And in doing so, then once we've done that, once we've committed the act of the bad habit, which the Bible calls sin, then in today's topic, we talk about justification. How we try to justify ourselves in saying it's okay, or everyone does it, or it's just going to happen again and again and again, and I have no control over it. That's personal justification. But we'll also talk about what the Bible calls godly justification. God, who sent his Savior for our sins, justified our sins on the cross. And we'll talk about that in the slide presentation. So right now, take a minute. If you're home, make you that cup of coffee and pause the video. Go ahead and look for a note tablet, something to take notes with, like a pen or paper, pen or pencil, and I'll be right back with you, okay? So today's topic is justification. I'll show you in a moment on a slide how that fits in to our cycle of addiction and overcoming addiction more specifically. With the word justification in mind, I'd like to show you that that was God's plan for our life. God's view when he looks at our sin is to only see God's righteousness through the blood of Christ. Christ's blood, which was shed on the cross for our sin, gives us complete justification. Otherwise, we would have no standing before a holy and a righteous God. Do we still have our sin and continue in sin because we're in a sinful body on this side of eternity? Yes, we're not yet in glorified bodies, but our sins have been forgiven and we are to be like Christ, perfect without sin. That requires a walk called sanctification to every day, purpose in your heart, be led by the spirit of God, be into the word of God to see what his will for your life is and to, even though we are yet sinners, because Christ died for our sins, we know that we are justified, and every day we can be more Christ-like. We're in the series today of the 12 trigger cycle, and that 12 trigger cycle shows us that every time we sin, we go through this cycle, point by point, all 12 points. Today in the lesson series, we're up to point number nine, which is justification. This is not the justification that Christ had for us when he died for us and shed his blood on the cross. That was God's justification. But we try to self-justify our own sins. Last week, we talked about after sin is actually uh, taken in our, our sinful body and our actions, then we withdraw from other people, and we then try to justify that to other people and justify it to ourselves. Those are the lies that easily beset us. Last week when we talked about relational withdrawal, it was ironic that after you sin and you feel guilty because of that, you distance yourself from the very people that you, you love and love you the most. And sometimes those are the ones that will pray for you, your Christian family, 
your Christian friends at church. Sometimes you quit going to church, maybe for a long period of time. We call that being backslidden. Just because you don't want to admit that you are a sinful person and weakness has caused you to sin yet once again. So this week, we're in trigger nine, which is justification. And it's the lies that we tell ourselves and our friends to make our sin acceptable. Now understand that many of the sins that we have, the world already accepts. The world, apart from Christ, already condones murder in the form of abortion. They condone drug use or drug abuse by legalizing and making those things socially acceptable. They condone pornography to an extent that they make it easily acceptable and accessible right on your computer laptop, maybe that you're using today. So dissecting the act of justification is what I want to do today. And when we get into the writing down lesson part where you take notes, I'll be giving you some Bible verses that you can go over and over again until you clearly understand them. Understand one point is that there are dangers of the tongue the things that you say in trying to justify your own sin. Understand that that's what makes us come up with the phrase, talk is cheap, when we sometimes say, well, I did it just this one time and I'll never do it again. Or we understand also that the seriousness of our justification, because when we try to sometimes just simply take the, the thought of our sin and make it right in our own heart, we know that we are sinning against God. What the world would tell us is, you deserve this. You deserve whatever your bad habit is. Now I've picked on chocolate because I know there are a lot of chocolate lovers. But this says, you deserve the bar of chocolate because, why, you're so pretty. You're so handsome. You're so smart. I like you. I love you. I owe you. Mercury's in retrograde. You had a bad day. You had a good day. I can't afford caviar. It'll melt in your mouth. Do we really need a reason to go and touch and taste of that thing that is sent to us? Normally in our minds, we rationalize it, we justify it, and say we don't. So some taking notes, where you're taking notes this morning on some of the talking points we'll be going into. This week's talking points are longer with more Bible verses. So I want you to write them down, reference them, and we can get started. But one thing I want you to understand before we leave the slides, and I try to say this every week, is that choosing not to exit this cycle, this cycle of addiction, at this point, someone will always be the victim of your sin. It's when we try to justify it, often when we say, but God, it's that wife that you gave me, or wives use your spouses, or the children that we have are just such a, such a burden. And so I can easily turn to fill in the blank, your sin. We'll look at that this morning. All right, I hope you have your cup of coffee with you now. After we've reviewed the slides, it's the most important part of the lesson where we actually take notes, focus on what the Bible says, and today's overall topic of justification is broken down by, again, an introduction to what justification is, and then the dangers of the tongue, and we'll get into that of how we try to justify uh, our sin, our addiction to other people, and then the fact that talk is cheap. A lot of times we can talk a lot and not really mean it, or when we talk to God in prayer, not really mean repentance in our heart. And then finally, the seriousness of justification. It's how God sees us and how God sees us dealing with this matter of justification. Last week, again, we, a quick review here, uh, we talked about how in relational withdrawal, we withdraw from people after we've sinned, after you've fallen back on your addiction and sinned once again. We withdraw from the very people that love us the most, who want to help us the most in overcoming that addiction. It's often our spouse, our children, our Christian friends, and those sometimes are our circle 
who would like to pray for us the most. They pray for us in our weakness that we might be strong. So today, when we talk about justification, we know that it's acceptable and it's the reason that we would do something immoral. We try to justify it ourselves. You are trying to prove that it was just reasonable or essentially defending your position. Most of us may remember uh, having a Clinton in the White House and Bill survived his final term as president, but did it under impeachment by the House because of moral and unethical practices. So after performing sexual acts in the Oval Office and the White House with his young female intern, he denied these acts saying, it depends upon the definition of what is, is. In doing that, he was a lawyer. He was very clearly trying to justify his adultery and fornication by twisting the definition of words. It didn't fool the members of Congress or the American people, and it certainly doesn't fool God. So here are three points to jot down. Number one, the power of justification makes sense only to the people who are caught in the sin. In the children's book, The Emperor's New Clothes, it tells the story of an insane king who de decided to go naked and convinced all of his subjects that he had on invisible clothes. And it happened until he was called out finally by a little boy. Point number two, justification is our attempt at self-protection. We justify our behavior because we don't want to face the reality of what we've actually done. And then point number three with justification is there's a difference between an apology and an admission of sin. Apologies acknowledge a mistake, while an admission of sin is confessing a moral wrongdoing. Point number two, if you're taking notes, the overall point now is dangers of the tongue. And here we get into some Bible verses by James, written to us by James, who was the half-brother of Jesus. He had a lot to say on the topic in his little book, the book of James in the New Testament. James said in chapter 3, verse 2, For in many things we offend all. If any man offendeth not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. That means that unless we stop making excuses for our sin, we will continue to be a slave to it. Once we begin the self-control and closing our mouth, the self-control of our behavior follows. In verse 5, James said, Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths so that they may obey us, and we also turn about the whole body. Behold also ships, which, though they be great, they're often driven by fierce winds. Yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. In our generation, President Clinton, Tiger Woods, Anthony Weiner, all have made great public apologies. But if you have, do people believe it? Does your spouse or your friend or your boss believe it because you've said it? In James chapter 3, verses 5b and 6, it says, Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Was it your sin or your bad habits that set your life on fire? Was it the lying or manipulating you tried to do to justify your sins? And the final point as we conclude, I'll talk to you about the seriousness of justification. It's one thing to talk too much and justify sin. It's another to justify your behavior and then use scripture out of context to prove your position before your family and your friends. This result is beating your family down with scripture and it should, or you should use God's word to lift it up. Second Peter, Peter chapter two, verses one through three says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying that the Lord, Lord bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow in their pernicious ways, by reason of whom 
the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So these are people who come in and we see them every day, every day in church, every day in our workplace. Uh, we see them trying to justify and use the Bible for righteousness, their own righteous, unrighteous sins. Second Peter chapter two, verses 10 through 14 continues this thought when Peter says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of the uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusations against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that are they understood not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, that shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots are they and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and the heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. So when we choose not to exit this cycle at this point, then we're only going to rationalize that what we did is right, what we did is good. It will be good in our own minds and people just have to accept it. But always when we rationalize, we'll try to say that someone else was the cause of our sin, our spouse, our children, the pressures of life, there was always an excuse. I wanna let you know that in this series, at any point in this cycle, you can stop doing what you're doing. You can repent, and repent means turn about, to turn in an about face, to quit doing the sin, to once and for all say, that's it. Christ's blood covered my sins, and I will not be a creature who continues in sin. I'll put the bad thing from me, and I will speak it no more, I will do it no more. I will simply change my ways. That concludes the lesson today. I hope you've enjoyed it. To see more continued lessons, continue to follow us at www.maranathapeoria.org. That's where you're probably watching us now. We're also on YouTube and different other media sources. And when you find us, if you see and hear something that's touching your life, probably there are another 100 friends that you have that it could touch their life as well. So see it share it, and hopefully we'll see you in church very soon. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. This is our song.